Whether the GDP will double in their Amritkal period under the NDA government, will it grow to 200 lakh crore by March 2024? And I want the Honorable Finance Minister to answer that question. It was a bit surprising and it was also uncharacteristic, I would say, to see the former finance minister, who's very senior, highly educated, was in the prestigious Harvard University even in 1968 when I was in primary school. So the former finance minister made a very linear comparison as to how the GDP has grown from 1991, 92, 25 lakh crore, and then 50 lakh crore, and then uh, 100 lakh crores, and so on, and then wondered if I, I will say that by the end of 23, 24, India will have 100 lakh crore as the GDP. In 91-92, India's GDP was 25 lakh crore. In 12 years, in 2003-04, it doubled to 50 lakh crore, doubled. In 10 years, under UPA, it doubled to 100 lakh crore, 25 to 50 to 100. I ask one simple question. If you are growing at such a fast rate, such a, a record-breaking rate, will you when you end your term today in 2023-24, will 100 lakh crore become 200 lakh crore? The finance minister, honorable finance minister, knows the answer. I know the answer. You know the answer. But I want the honorable finance minister, I no. want the honorable finance minister to no, say... No. The, answer is, the answer is known to the finance minister, the former finance minister. I'm out of it. Whether, whether the GDP will double in their Amritkal period under the NDA government, will it grow to 200 lakh crore by March 2024? And I want the Honorable Finance Minister to answer that question. The former Finance Minister made a very linear comparison as to how the GDP has grown from 1991, 92, 25 lakh crore, and then 50 lakh crore, and then uh, 100 lakh crores, and so on, and then wondered if I, I will say that by the end of 23, 24, India will have 100 lakh crore as the GDP. That is, see, if I understood, if I heard him right, he said, going by the trend of doubling every 10 years, it might. So I, I'm confident that the question is asked with a certain sense of confidence that the Indian economy and people are contributing for its growth. But I would only refer to one editorial which appears today in a paper. I'm not saying my view, but if you would permit me, and I'll also do a authentication and everything else. There is an editorial in the Economic Times today which says, a four trillion dollar plus we go, GDP expected to catch up in the coming fiscal. And goes to elaborate, and there's just one line that I'll read for the house, for the benefit of the house, and I quote, as India's GDP rises, would the market cap rise in tandem? Though there is no direct correlation, there could be significant wealth effects that provide tailwinds to the economy. Retail investors own 10% of the equity, about $400 billion, and their share has been rising. That should help consumption, which accounts for close to 60% of the GDP. So, linking that to the growth of the GDP itself, this write-up, which is an editorial in a paper, which is a pink paper, which observes the Indian economy, 
we get a picture and a probable answer to the former finance minister. Sir, then the worker population ratio was also another issue with the honorable former finance minister raised. I just want to highlight, incorrect it was for him to suggest that the worker population ratio has not improved. There is, obviously he's done some kind of a, if you permit me, whimsical calculation there and then, and uh, which serves him well, and the interpretation is not right. As per the PLFS, that is the Periodic Labor Force Survey, WPR, the worker population ratio, that is the share of the employed in the total population, has increased to 56% in 2022-23 from 46.8% in 2017-18. And I underline the fact that this is post-COVID, that it has gone up to 56%. So there is an increase in the worker population ratio, and this is government's data. So youth unemployment rate, that is the age between 15 to 29, has declined. Unemployment rate has declined to 10% in 2022-23 from 17.8% in 1718. So there, the unemployment is also declined while youth LFPR has expanded from 38% to 44.5% over the same period. So unemployment is coming down. You have the data to show it's also employment is also going up. In fact, sir, WPR in 2005 was 42%, which fell to 38.6% in 2011-12. So fall happened then. Then, in, despite a COVID, which is a once-in-a-century pandemic, we have revived the employment, and the data shows that very clearly. And also, sir, the very schemes, various schemes that we have, Mudra or Sw Swanidhi and so on, are promoting <coughs> self-employment, particularly the lower sections of our society. More than 25 lakh crores have been dispersed to over 44 crore Mudra accounts. 68% of them are women. They do their own business and probably employ one or two more people there. 73 lakh street vendors have availed of cheap credit under PM Swanidhi program, and even in that, 44% are women. So I think the hard work and the entrepreneurial spirit of the Indian youth who go in for small self-employment cannot be ignored at convenience and cannot be raised saying, oh, the poor are without jobs at some other time. There should be some kind of a alignment 